U.S. Army Specialist Jeffrey Wagoner received a funeral with full military honors. He was medically evacuated out of Afghanistan in 2007 after he sustained a groin injury when a rocket-propelled grenade exploded during a house-to-house -house search. But that's not what killed him. Wagoner survived his deployment. He died back home. In this motel, just hours after being discharged from a Department of Veterans Affairs hospital in Oregon. While recovering from his wounds, Wagoner's mental state deteriorated. He became addicted to painkillers, and the Army sent him to the detox center at this VA hospital in Roseburg to get clean. But the hospital continued to give him narcotics, and after two months, they released him with a massive cocktail of drugs including 12 tablets of the painkiller oxycodone. Since Jeff's death, his father Greg has been trying to piece together what happened. I couldn't believe the amount of medications that was being prescribed to him. After he left the hospital, Jeff went to a nearby motel. He picked up a six pack of beer. He checked into a room, has a couple beers, decides he's hungry. He goes next door to a restaurant orders up a plate of nachos and another beer, and then becomes very groggy. The surveillance footage shows what happened next. Jeff fumbles with the keys to his room, barely able to stand. He nods, then lurches forward and collapses. Wagoner lay on the floor for an hour until the paramedics arrived. They tried to revive him, but it was too late. The state medical examiner concluded that in addition to the two beers, Jeff consumed eight oxycodone pills along with tranquilizers and muscle relaxants that he got from the VA. Greg Wagoner has never watched the video. He believes the VA was complicit in his son's death. The last thing you would think is you have a child in the hospital trying to get care, that somebody would call at your door and tell you that he passed away. Since Wagoner's death five years ago, the Roseburg Hospital's narcotic prescription rate has continued to rise. We tried to interview the hospital director, but our request was denied. Last year, doctors in Roseburg wrote more opiate prescriptions per patient than at any VA hospital in the country, according to data obtained by the Center for Investigative Reporting. The center analyzed 12 years of prescription data from the VA and found that prescriptions for four highly addictive painkillers have surged by 270% since the war in Afghanistan began, far outstripping the increase in patients. Dr. Steven Zanakis is a psychiatrist and retired Army Brigadier General. He says the data shows the agency is over-medicating patients as it struggles to keep up with their need for complex treatment. They're working in these clinics, they're very busy, they've got time constraints, they've got pressures, and giving a prescription, uh, which they know how to do and they're trained to do, is almost a default. Zinakis says that prescription opiates actually hurt most veterans rather than help them. You've been exposed to a number of blasts and are already feeling the effects of the blasts, and then you add a medication for pain like an opiate, that's gonna make your thinking problems even worse. And not only that, you're gonna feel more depressed. The VA has known about this problem for years. In 2011, VA researchers published a study showing the fatal overdose rate among VA patients is nearly double the national average. And four years ago, the agency adopted regulations designed to get doctors to use alternatives to prescription opiates. We spent a month trying to get someone from the VA to go on the record about prescription painkillers, but no one would talk to us. I want to get back to over-medication and perhaps... The issue yeah, is drawing interest on Capitol Hill. In March, Dr. Robert Petzl, the VA's Undersecretary for Health, testified before the Senate Committee on Veterans Affairs. Let me deal first with opioids, um, which is the most dangerous, in my mind, of, uh, of our over-medication issues. Petzl says the VA uses opiates only as a last all, resort. When you're not able to manage the pain in any other way, it's opioids. Um, and then there are very careful protocols about how that prescribing should be done. 
But the data shows the rate of prescriptions for opiates continues to rise. And across the country, we found veterans addicted to painkillers they got from the VA. In Newport, New Hampshire, Tim Fazio is trying to stay clean. Fazio is a Marine Corps veteran who served in Iraq and Afghanistan. Two years after he came home, he went to the VA for help. Since then, VA doctors have provided him with nearly 4,000 oxycodone pills. I thought the painkillers were okay because the doctors were prescribing them to me. If the doctors are giving this to me, I'm going to take it, you know? And shit, if it makes you feel good, I'm going to take 15 of them, you know what I mean? <laughs> Fazio deployed to Fallujah, and he survived a three-day firefight in Afghanistan. He wasn't severely wounded in the war. He says he took the pills to blot out the guilt and shame of surviving when so many of his fellow Marines died after coming home. His medical records show the VA knew he was an addict, yet continued to dole out more opiates. At Tim's family home in western Massachusetts, his father, Mike Fazio, has built a basement shrine to his family's military legacy. This is my son, Tim. When he, this is when he got out of boot camp. He was so proud. Fazio says his son's life started spiraling out of control after Tim's best friend from the Marine Corps died. He encouraged him to get help at the local VA hospital. The doctors loaded him up on painkillers. That was the beginning and the end for him. Tim was hooked and overdosed again and again. His parents kicked him out, and he moved in with Eric Dimitrian, another former Marine. The two fed each other's addictions, and when they ran out of pills, they bought heroin. Eventually, Tim realized he needed to move out. Three months later, Dimitrian died of an overdose. Today, Fazio is living with his girlfriend. He's been clean for six months now, but staying off opiates hasn't been easy. In July, after a violent confrontation landed him in a VA emergency room, he was shocked when an agency doctor again prescribed oxycodone. Tim says he filled the prescription and then stared at the bottle. I opened it up a couple times a day for probably three or four days, try to just take one out. I said, if I take this, you know, I'm not gonna be. I'm not gonna be living where I am right now. I'm gonna be off and running again. It's gonna send me on my way. So uh, I flushed him. With his mind no longer deadened by opiates, flashbacks and anxiety make him angry and explosive. And so, despite that recent history, Fazio still turns to the VA for help. He's up early this morning, waiting for a shuttle to take him to the VA. My goal is to figure out where this rage, anxiety, and all this is coming from when, uh, when I've been, you know, I've been sober. Uh, I gotta figure out where that comes from and how to cope with that, I guess. The Department of Veterans Affairs remains a refuge for Tim. Thank you, John. He says it's a place where he can surround himself with other veterans, men and women who have survived war, only to battle addiction at home.